How done? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. God bless you all. Hi, Mama Anne. Good morning. Hi, Anne. Good morning. Hi, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Elizabeth. Good morning. I don't know why it's bright, but I like it. Hi, hi, hi. Good morning. Hi, Yvonne. Good morning, Mama. Good morning, Aminetta. Good morning. Good morning, Veronica. Good morning. Good morning, Uju. Good morning, Natasha. Good morning, Lady P. Good morning, Favor. Good morning. 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 God bless you as you're coming. God bless you as you're coming. I need you all to come quickly because we're going straight to the Council of Yahweh. We're going straight to the Council of Yahweh. Come in, come in, come in. Hi, Mama Peace. Good morning. Good morning to you all. Good morning to you all. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. In today's video, I'll be teaching you how to summon your enemies to the council of Yahweh how to lay complain how to lay complain in the court of law of heaven <laughs> so come in I need you all to come in good morning guys God bless you all I welcome each and every one of you in the name of Jesus oh <laughs> okay good morning Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you. Good morning, Veronica. Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you all. I welcome each and every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the peace of the Lord be with you. May the favor of the Lord be with you. May the favor of the Lord be with you. May God cause his light to shine upon you, show you his salvation, and help you pull through in the name of Jesus. Amen. Before we go into the prayer, I want us to read Psalm 140. Psalm 140. Psalm 23 is working for you, Sharon. Yes, it will. You know that Psalm 23, we tend to ignore it. When I was growing up as a child, I sing with it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We sing with it and we don't even know the meaning. It says the Lord is your shepherd. And as a good shepherd, it is his job. Oh, you got a job. That's good. Congratulations. It, and as a good shepherd, it's, that's his job to protect you. It's his job to make sure you don't lack. It's his job to make sure that he keeps you safe. So keep reminding God, you are my shepherd. I should not be lacking. You are my shepherd. I should not be going through pain. You are my shepherd. I should not be going through shame. In the name of Jesus, it is a very wonderful psalm to pray. Early in the morning, every morning before you wake, before you go out, God bless you. But that's not what we're praying today. We're going to be reading Psalm 140. Psalm 140. But before we read this Psalm 140, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to summon your enemies in the court of law of God. Yes. You know the way you serve people? Um, how do they do it? You serve them papers, right? Court order. Good. The way you serve them court order. You can actually serve them spiritual court order. Yes. You can actually take up that case. Take up that case to heavens. Summon the angels. And I'll show you how to do that. Summon God. Summon the Trinity. Summon um, 24 elders. Summon the seven, um, seven archangels and all the angels. Then you summon the spirit of the person that, um, that oppressed you. And then you will start saying what you want. And I tell you the truth. And I tell you the truth. 
at the end of this, hmm, you will get victory. But before we do that, let's read Psalm 140. Psalm 140, and I read, Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men. Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men. And he says, those who plan things in their hearts and stir up war continuously. Those who plan evil in their hearts, they stir up war. What they speak is not what they do. They, they, they act nice towards you, but inside their hearts, they hate you. Inside their hearts, they are stirring up malice. Inside their hearts, they have evil plots against you. Inside their hearts, they have evil wishes against you. There are people who come before you, they are your friends, they laugh with you. But deep inside them, they are wishing for something bad to happen to you. Most times, they tend to listen. If they say, oh, this bad thing has happened to this person, you see them, they will come and try to sympathize with you. But deep inside them, they are happy that you're going through such pains. They are happy that you're going through such pains. Your left hand is itching you. Make a declaration. Left hand itching you is pending. It's not good. Make a declaration. Call the blood of Jesus. Breathe into it three times and you'll be fine. So it goes again. <clears throat> they make their tongue sharp as a serpent, and under their lips is the poison of viper. Their tongues are sharp. You know those people that they talk down on you. Even before you say one thing, they've said 20. They are always defensive. Even when they are wrong, even when they are wrong, they Proved to be right. They are always um, acting as their victims. They are the ones hurting you. They are the ones taking your peace away from you. They are the ones taking your joy away from you. But yet, they act like victims all the time. They act like you're the one that is oppressing them. They are actually the ones oppressing you. But because they feel they have this willpower to talk, they they act like they act like they are actually. Um, um, they're actually the ones that are, that are being wronged. They tend to tell you that you're the one that is wronging them. Why in the other way around? They're the one hurting you. So it goes again to say, hide me, hide me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. There are so many wicked people around the world. Hide me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from violent men who has planned to trip up my feet. Arrogant men have hidden a trap for me, and with cord they have spread a net. By the wayside, they have set a snail for me. The reason why I'm starting off with this scripture is, when you want to do this prayer I'm about to show you, you need to read this prayer. This prayer is simply telling God, avenge for me. This psalm is simply telling God, avenge for me. For those people are up against me. For these people tend to have a sweet voice um, on the outside, but if you go to them insidely, they are evil and they plot hate, hate words for me. They plot evil for me. They even plot to take away life, the life that they did not create. These people come to you. They can do everything nice for you, but once they move aside from you, they are plotting how to take your life. There are people like that. As a matter of fact, we tend to associate with these people, but we don't know. We actually live with these people, but we don't know. They try everything possible to take our lives, but when they come out to the open, they act as if they are the nicest people on earth, but they are not. And you yourself, it even makes you crazy. You yourself will be asking, is this not the person that has been saying evil things about me? Is this not the person that has been hurting me? How come this person is now being nice to me? You yourself, you'll be confused, thinking, am I actually mixing things up? Why you're not wrong? These people act like victims. Why they are the ones hurting you? So let us go to the prayer for today. So in today's prayer, I would need you to get money. I would need you to get 20 naira. The using I'm I'm using twenty naira. Oh, it's my mom that gave me this money. It smells nice. I will need you to get twenty naira, but in case you don't have um twenty naira is my currency. You can use your own currency. Any the least money, it could be twenty dollar. I don't know if it's too much. I don't know if it's too much. Twenty dollar. It could be um I don't know twenty euro. It could be I don't know the other currencies i don't know their names so yet lots of them in churches yes 
So use this money. We're going to be using this money to make a prayer, right? So this prayer we're going to be making right now, it's a very powerful one. There are rules to this prayer. There are strict rules to this prayer. Yes. The number one rule to this prayer is uprightness. You must make sure that you're innocent. I need to bring this down. Make sure you're innocent. If you're going to serve someone, um, if you're going to serve someone a spiritual letter, right? Or summon that person to court of law because that's what we're doing. One, make sure you're innocent. I don't if you're if you have if you're in Nigeria, I'm not sure you should use 50 naira. It's 20 naira that has always worked. Um I, I don't know if money is in, you can use 20, you can use 50, but I always use 20. 20 is the least amount I use. So it's small. It's not something you're... Or you can use any amount. The reason why I said you can use any amount is this. Most people can't afford 50 naira. Most people can't afford um, the highest money. In my country, this is a small money. In your country, this could be big. But in my country, this is very, very small. It cannot even buy anything for you as we speak. The least it can buy for you is sachet water. Sachet water one. So in your country, this could be big money. So you go down to the lowest. If this is a big money, if $20 is big, you can go down to the lowest. You can go down to $1. But in my own country, this is least. It's, it can't even buy anything. Just one sachet water. One, even that sachet water will not be enough for you. So number one rule is make sure, make sure you're innocent. Please, I am begging you. Because if you're not innocent, it will backfire. If you're not innocent, it will come back to you. Check yourself. I remember one time a friend of mine was having an issue. She said she kept complaining, complaining that these people are hurting them. I told her, go home and check. If you search the round and you've not done anything to them, then come back, I'll tell you what to do. But if you have searched, if you have searched and you know you have wronged them, go back and apologize to them. I'm not scaring you. Who said I'm scaring him? I'm not scaring you. This is not scary. This is no way diabolic. Hold on. You see where I'm going to? This is the highest prayer you can make. This is in no way, any form, shape, diabolic. But the reason why I'm asking you to make sure you're innocent is God is a just God. God does not compromise. God is not a judge. He's not a physical court judge that will see something and, and, and say something else. And remember, he knows how it happened. Because he sees in the spirit and he sees in the physical. He knows how to take care of it for you. It is God we're meeting. We're not meeting man. If it is man, he can, comp he can compromise it. Man can change tomorrow. Man can say, oh, um, um, today is fair, tomorrow is dark. But God cannot, comp God cannot change it. If it is dark, it remains dark forever. It is, if it is white, it remains white forever. That is why I said, make sure, make sure you are innocent. Because you need to be innocent to do this. If not, you that went there to ask God to fight for you, it will turn back on you. Because you're not saying the truth. When asking God for something, you don't lie. There is no lies with God. No lies at all. You need to be 100% innocent to do this then when you've cleared your conscience that you're innocent when you've cleared your conscience that nothing is that um that you didn't wrong this person then you can go ahead who can make this prayer who can make this prayer if you're if you're not innocent if you're guilty don't make this prayer mm -mm. It's not even about asking for forgiveness. 
If you're guilty, don't make this prayer. Look for a way to make amends, but not with this prayer. If you're guilty, don't make the prayer. Look for a way. You can make other prayers, asking God for forgiveness to remedy it. But don't go to the council of Yahweh. It is, it is only those that need justice that have been oppressed. Those that have been oppressed, that need justice, that know that they can't get justice anywhere. And they are innocent. They are innocent. That is who that that is who will go who will do these things good. The first person that will do this prayer is if you have been accused wrongly. Number one. If you have been accused wrongly, this is the first person that will do this. It's as a group of people that will do this. I'm just listing it. The first one is a wrong accusation. You didn't do anything to them. Hi, good morning, G. Anna. You didn't do anything to them. You have been accused wrongly. One. You need justice. Someone has a testimony, Docas. The second one is if you have been oppressed. If someone has been constantly oppressing you, an enemy, you know there are people that brag, they hurt you, they come to your face and tell you, you can't do anything. They hurt you, they come to your face and say, you cannot do anything. I'm going to give you an example. If you're a married woman, listen please, if you are a married woman, and your husband's side cheek is threatening to take over your home and keep saying, you cannot do anything to me, your husband's side cheek. And you know very well that you're innocent. Even when being single, you never dated one. Even when being single, you never slept with anyone's husband. And as a matter of fact, this man came to you. You didn't snatch him from anywhere. Please, by all means, move to the council of Yahweh. Let God be the judge. This is the second people that will do this. They told people, if anyone is oppressing you and your children, if they've taken your land, for instance, let me use a young widow or a widow, for instance, that they've taken the things your husband left for you. This is your husband. You're legally married to this man. It doesn't matter if you have children for him. Because once you're legally married, he automatically becomes yours, both in the physical and in the spirit. Then this man is automatically yours. And maybe something happened, life happened that he died. Hmm? And his people are now there to take what belongs to you. They want to take up what belongs to you. They want to take your proper husband's property because it is yours. They want to take it. They keep telling you you can't do anything. They brag with all sort of things. They brag with all sort of um, um, native doctor, all sort of juju, all sort of witchcraft. And they'll tell you, you cannot do anything. Try and see. Please, by all means, walk straight to the council of Yahweh. They, they force people to do this. If you notice that there is someone somewhere sitting and trying to kill you or your children. This person is trying to kill you or your children. Or you know that this person is responsible. Make sure you know that it is this person that is responsible for what is wrong with you. This person is responsible for what is going on in your home. Like this person is the one that wants to kill your children or the one that is trying to make them not to be useful or is the one that is obstructing um, the progress of you and your children. You're sure of it. In fact, you've seen it in the dream. You've seen the physical movement. You've seen everything about this person. And you know that it is this person because there are people you know, you know that is this person that is, you are my problem. This is, who, this is what is wrong with me. You are my problem. You're the weapon fashioned against me. If you're sure of it, you move to the council of Yahweh. Then if you were a student, that's the fifth person to do it. Is it the fifth or the sixth? The fifth, the sixth person to do it is. 
Yes, you can do it for the people that ate your money and insulted you. But make sure you do not eat people's money. Make sure you do not eat people's money or you did not do something wrong to that person. Please, make sure you did not do something wrong. Maybe you did not take the person's money. Because some people, you may take someone's money and the person will come for revenge and you start being angry. So make sure you didn't do anything bad to this person. Then if you are a student, if you are a student, right? And let's say your lecturer. I'm using these lecturers because Nigerian lecturers do the most. And your lecturer says, oh, before I, you pass this particular course, you must come and see me. Seeing me is not even giving the money. Seeing me with your body. If you're in this situation, or if you know anyone in this situation, if you know anyone in this situation, please, by all means, move to the council of your this particular one, this student one, right? I, I when before I turned this live stream, I was having a conversation with my mom. She said there was a day they were in divine mercy prayer. Then a student came in, she was crying. All throughout they were doing divine mercy. This girl was crying. She was crying and crying. My mom said, ah, ah. she turned back and now asked her, when they finished the divine mercy, she asked her, What is wrong with you? She said that she's in final year and you know how um, how important it is for her to graduate, not to have a carryover. That is her final year. That her lecturer said if she didn't come to settle him with her body, that, she, that he will fail her. If she did not come to settle him, she will fail her. My mom said, oh, he said it. Okay. Bring 20 naira. Thank God you're in the church. You can start it today. Go to the altar. Go to the altar and summon them. Summon them for three days. When you're done with the third day, throw the money there. Then go home. And watch God fight for you. He says, you're just, he's a just God. One thing I love about God is he is a just God. He does not compromise. That is why I trust his judgment. His judgment is straightforward. He's not a respecter of any man. He doesn't even care. He wants justice to be served. So if you're wrong, he takes you down. So this lady, the lecturer had to send for her. There was trouble. The lecturer sent for her. I need you to call the course rep. Call this lady. I need her to come. Then she came and he immediately, he immediately marked her script. And she came back to testify. So this is how your enemies will be restless. They will be restless until the justice is served, until they undo or untie whatever it is they've tied in your home. So these things now, I don't know if I mentioned your case. But if you're in any of these categories, right, you're being oppressed. They are trying to take what belongs to you. They are trying to take away your children. Exactly when they are taking away your children, when you want to share custody with your husband and what he wants is to take away your children and push you out of the house. What he wants is destroy you and take you out completely. What do you do? You go to the council of Yahweh where justice is served, not even in the physical law courts. Because in the physical law courts, there are things that need to be considered. They will do all sorts of things. But in the council of Yahweh, everything is done accordingly. You go there. You go there and justice will be saved. If someone's scammed you and you know the person's name, do you know there are people that scam you, right? They scam you and they brag. What can you do? You cannot do anything. You, they scammed you and they are bragging. Abby, good. Go and report them.
So this is what we're going to do. Let us go into the prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as we make this prayer, let there be understanding. As we make this prayer, let there be total understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we decree that whatsoever prayer we're going to make today, so prayer we're going to make today will be effective 100% in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. What do you need for this prayer? You just need a single note. This single note, you're not going to spend it because you're going to pray for three days. You're going to locate an altar. Altars are very strong. Altars are very, very strong. You're going to locate an altar. If you're a Catholic, by all means, please. But if you're not a Catholic, right, you can locate any of your altars. But make sure that the altar you're locating, the altar you're going to lay complain, is an altar built with God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. An altar built in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because there are so many altars right now that I'm not sure they mentioned the name of Jesus at all. Not even making him the foundation of their church. There are so many altars that if your eyes are open, you will never step your feet into that space again. There are so many altars that once you step in there, instead of taking in blessing, you go home with curses. So go ahead and locate an altar. Some people say there are altars that are, there are some altars I know that are built with, um, with God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit that are not Catholics. I know that Catholics, I know Catholics especially build their altar with Trinity, yes. Catholics build their altars with Trinity. But there are some that are good, that are a good man of God, a good, a strong man of God, built in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Locate that altar if you can't locate a Catholic church. But if you can locate a Catholic church, please, by all means do. If you can locate a Catholic church, Please, by all means, do. But if you cannot locate a Catholic church, do. Someone said, can I use my altar blessed by a priest? If a priest came to your home and blessed your altar, you can use your altar. If a priest came to your home and blessed your altar, and you know that that altar, you've been keeping it sacred. You know that that altar, you've been keeping that altar so sacred. Please, use the altar. But if it's an altar you built for yourself, they corrected this one, no. Go to the Blessed Sacrament. I know it may be difficult for people to locate a Blessed Sacrament. That is why I'm just skeptical. But if you can, please. You don't need to locate three, three altars, just one. It's just one altar that you need to locate. Just one altar that you're using. But this altar, you're going to visit it three times. This altar, you're going to visit it three times. This is what you're going to do. The first day you visit this altar, when you get to the altar, as someone who came to complain, right? As someone who came to complain, you're going to be calling Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one. Hmm? Then you're going to be calling 24 elders, two. You're going to be calling the seven archangels. Seven archangels. Seven archangels. Angel Michael, Angel, Ru Angel Gabriel, Angel Uriel, Angel Raphael, Angel Charlotte, Angel Barachev, Angel Jubel, Jubel. Abby? Jehubel. I don't know. I can't pronounce that one. So you're going to be calling the seven archangels. Then when you're done with calling the seven archangels, this noise, when you're done with calling the seven archangels, you're going to now invite the host of angels in the heaven. These are the people that will be witness to this justice. These are the people that will be witness to this justice. I don't know if you guys are understanding me. I'm trying to take it easily, one after the other, so that you will understand what I'm trying to say. You will understand what I am trying to say. So, 
in this case, you're going to invite all the angels. Remember, first is Trinity. Second is 24 angels. You know 24 angels. The 24 angels are those that stand in front of God. They are 24. They stand in his presence 24-7. They don't leave. You're going to be inviting them too. Then you're going to be inviting the seven, the seven archangels. Then when you're done inviting the seven archangels, you're going to invite the host of angels as you're kneeling down on that altar. What you would do, if you come into the altar, you kneel down. Then you tell God what you want. You tell him, I have come this day to lay a complaint. Tell him, I have come this day to lay a complaint. I have come to lay a complaint before you, between I and this person. I call upon the, the, the Trinity, God the Father. I want you all to be a witness to this case I have with this person. God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The 24 angels, the seven archangels, the, the host of angels in heaven. When you're done with that prayer, then you go ahead to tell them, this noise is too much. When, then you go ahead to tell them, I am here with this money, with this token in my hands, as a witness, as a bill. You're using it to pay your bill. You don't come out empty-handed. You're going to use it. It's just like paying for a cut, a cut bill. I don't know, I don't know if... if you're paying for a court bill. So you're using it as a point of contact, reaching the case you're making, and you will start telling them what you want. If you need to cry, you cry. If you need to, if you need to roll on the floor while doing this prayer, please do. Cut fee. If you need to roll on this floor, please do. But make sure you're telling them what you want because once you invite them, they are there. Then you go ahead and tell them, fight for me. I need justice. Look at what this person is doing to me. This person has accused me wrongly. Accused me wrongly. I know nothing about it. God, you are the God of justice. I want justice to serve. I want you to vindicate me. I want you to serve justice. I want you to show the world that you are God. I want you to show the world that I serve a living God. I need you to serve justice. I need justice to be served. I want you to help me. When you're done, if someone has taken your children, you tell God, this is my child. I baited this child. If you want to share custody with your spouse, go ahead and tell God, I need you to set this justice. I need you to settle this case between you and I and this person. It is a settlement case. Let justice be served. I want to. I want justice to be served. I want to go out there knowing fully well that I have a God who listens to me when I call. That I have a God who never abandons me. That I have a God who always comes to my rescue. Then, in the case of a woman trying to take your home, go ahead. If you need to go with your marriage picture, go ahead. Go with your wedding picture. The wedding of your husband tell god this is the man you gave to me this is the man that is married to me i don't know this other person i don't know who is coming to take my home but because you're a just god because you're the one that fights fight this battle for me remember he said the battle is his he's god that fights battle no one can help him in fighting battles. Lord, fight this battle for me. I need you to fight this battle. I need you to take away this woman that is trying to take my home away. Please make this prayer, I beg you. Please, please, I need you to take away this woman that is trying to divide my home. My home is a peaceful one. My home used to be a blessed one. But she came in and she wants to destroy my home. Lord, fight for me. Avenge for me. Avenge for me. You are God that speaks for those who do not have mouth. You are God that speaks for those. Yes, they may have gone to so many places, native doctors, which, is, which, um, which houses and all the things they do. Yes, they have gone to that place. That is why I have come to this place. Because you are my strength. You are my refuge. You are my help in time of trouble. It is you I rely on. If you don't help me, I am finished. If you don't help me, I don't know where to get this help from. Help me, Lord, for I know you would do it. Go ahead and say your prayers. You see, you see all those prayers. You see all those prayers you make when crying. You cry, go ahead. This is the time to cry as much as you want. This is the time to tell God because once you summon these angels, 
all of them are there to listen to you. So you go ahead and tell God, this is what I want. I want justice to be served. I want justice to be served. I want you to vindicate me. Fight for me. Fight for me. Fight for me. Fight for me. I need you to fight for me. I can't fight this fight alone. Because the truth remains that you see those enemies of your life. They are somewhere. They are somewhere plotting evil. They are somewhere in witch's house or wherever they go to. Trying so hard. Trying so hard to destroy you and your home. So don't give them that opportunity. Do not give them that opportunity. When you've gotten to that law court, when you've gotten to that prayer house, to when you've gotten to that altar, please don't even take it lightly. Tell God everything that is going on. He is a just God. He knows it. He knows what is going on, but he needs you to tell him. When you tell him, you've given him authority to go ahead and fight for you. And when these angels are involved, this person cannot, cannot go scot free. That is why I said, make sure can i do it on behalf of my child yes you can do it but make sure your child is innocent in this case the only thing required is innocency make sure you are innocent so that whatever prayer you do will not backfire at you please so if someone is trying to is bewitching your children you see that there is an uncle somewhere destroying your children destroying the life of your children taking the destiny of your children as a mother run to the council of Yahweh. Go and report to God. Tell him to fight for you. He's a God that fight. He said the battle is his. Tell him to arise. Arise and fight for me. Fight for me. I have come for you to fight for me. I have summoned all the host of angels for you people to fight for me. I have summoned the Trinity for you to fight for me. I have summoned the 24 elders for you to fight for me. Go ahead and fight for me. I can't do this battle on my own. Physically, this person is powerful more than I am because he has other things that are giving him strength and that he's boasting with. So fight for me. In you do I boast. In you do I. I am so proud in you, Lord Jesus. I am so proud in you. Go ahead. If someone is taking your land, go ahead and report that person. Let God fight for you. Do this and watch what God will do for you. Do this and watch how everything will turn around. In the space of for some few days or months, Everything will turn around. That is how you see them. Hmm? When you make this prayer and it goes effectively, that is how you see them. They'll be fighting themselves. That is how you see that they'll be confessing unnecessarily. They'll be disgracing themselves. Yes. They'll be disgracing themselves. They'll be fighting themselves. Let me tell you one thing. When I was little, there was this woman. I told you when my dad died when I was very little. Then there's this woman she she used to pray with my mom and something happened i don't know what they did but whatever she did made my mom cry so that day my mom came back so bitter she was crying she was crying uncontrollably hey i felt bad i was lit to guys <laughs> i didn't know what to do then at night I slept. When everybody was sleeping, I woke up in the middle of the night with tears in my eyes. I summoned God. With tears rolling down my eyes, I summoned God. I told him, I have come to your court, court, um, your is it what do you guys call it? I've come to your house. I have come to the law court. I have come and I summoned the woman. I called the woman's name and I told God, let justice prevail. I want you to vindicate my mom because I know the story. I know the story because whenever my mom, whether if she goes, she'll come and tell us, see what is happening. So I actually know the story. So when she was crying, I didn't understand why this woman would lie. And this woman is a minister of God. That's the annoying part of it. That is why I don't like prophecy. I don't give prophecy. Do you know that I, I prefer to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and it will work for you than giving you prophecy. I don't like prophecy because most of these prophecies are lies. Most of these prophecies that people give, they are pure lies. Because what this woman did was just in a, on a norm trying to destroy a family that was together. She won, She almost shattered my family. 
with her when i mean lies that that you can't even start thinking when you think of it you can't you can't even make sense out of it so when i finished that prayer i summoned her i summoned her i told her i am calling you in the court of law come let god be the judge i made that prayer that night then few days later the woman called my mom i was apologizing she called my mom and said all sort of things that she's sorry that that was how my mom was vindicated. So what I'm trying to say is this. I was lead to, guys. I was lead to. I was, in, I was a teenager when I made this prayer. And then I did not even know what it means to go to the council of Yahweh. If I knew that you could go to the altar, I would go. But I knew that there is a just God. I knew that there is a God that serves justice. That is in, I knew there is a God that is that can that vindicates people. As little as I was, I knew that. And that was why I summoned this woman. So now that I'm teaching you, please don't take this for granted. Make sure that you're innocent while doing this. If you're not innocent, just drop it and start asking for mercy. But if you looked around and you're innocent, and this person is doing all means to pull you down by all means, Go and report God. Go and report to God. So when you're done with this prayer, you're going to make this prayer the first day. Make this prayer the second day. Make this prayer the third day. Remember, you're with your court fee. This is your court fee. Huh? Make this prayer the first day, second day, and third day. After the third day, drop the money in the chapel. Don't go with it. Don't give it to anybody. By all means, drop the money there. Even if there is no basket to put money, drop it on that altar and leave. Don't take it home. Drop it there and move out. When you drop the money, you go. Then relax. Do you know how you relax and watch things unfold? That is how you relax and watch things unfold. That is how you relax and watch things happen. That is how you relax and watch your enemies be put to shame. Can I request more than one request? Yes, you can. After your, after your case is a case. After you finish presenting this case, you present this case. If you have so many cases you need to present, Go ahead and present it. After you present this case, I have another case. You present this case. You present this case. Must be three consecutive days. The first day you go. The second day you go. The third day you go. On the third day, drop the money at the altar and leave. On the third day, drop the money on the altar and leave. For those whose children are held up, they are in jail, and you know your son did not do it, or your child did not do any of the things they accused him or her for. You're very sure that your child did not do any of these things. You're 100% sure that your child did not do any of those things. Do it on behalf of your child. Go ahead and do it on behalf of your child then watch how things will happen. You can't come to the court of law and go back empty-handed. You, you can't come to the court that God, that, that God is the chief justice and justice will not be served. He's the chief judge and justice will not be served. It's not possible. He will grant you that request. He's the God that sees in the spirit and in the physical. He's the God that sees at all times. Go ahead and do this effectively. And I tell you the truth. The way things will happen. You see those people that are oppressing you. They'll be fighting themselves. Even they'll call you where you are. And they'll be saying, this person did this. This person did this. My hand is not there. I, did not, I was not involved in their case. So I was not. That is how they'll be disgracing themselves. That is how they'll be disgracing themselves. Content, O oh Lord, with those who content with me. Please do not forget to read Psalm 140. 
Do not forget to read Psalm 140. Don't forget it. You can even make Psalm 140 your daily prayer. It's asking God to deliver me from these people. It vindicates me. I need vindication. I need you to fight for me. I can't fight. I cannot fight. I don't have the strength to. I don't have the strength. You're the strength of those who do not have strength. You're the help of the helpless. As you are the help of the helpless, help me, help me, help me. I need help. I've come to your council for help. I can't do this on my own. I've tried solving this with human understanding and human knowledge. I cannot solve it on my own. I cannot do this on my own. I am calling on you to help me. I am calling on you to vindicate me. I am calling on you to fight for me. If it's just for my own physical strength, it can't carry me. That is why I need you, Lord, to vindicate me. That is why I need you, Lord, to fight for me. This case has gone beyond me. That is why I've come to your council. That is why I've come to the council of Yahweh to tell you, Lord, to fight for me. To tell you, Lord, to speak for me. I can't do this on my own. Left for me this life, I cannot. When people point at you and tell you you cannot do anything, you can tell them that I have a big God. I have a God. Yes, I may not be able to do anything. Who am I? But my God can do something. I may not be able to challenge you. I may not be able to match up to the strength of your occultism. But my God can do it. Then you tell them, you will hear from my God. You won't hear from me. Do I have strength? I don't have strength, but I have someone who has more strength than anyone can think of. You will hear from him. Be careful with this prayer. Cry to God every day. Do the same. Do this the same day. My husband sent me away after three years. He died. What did you do? Your husband sent you away. See, I tell you. If you must do this prayer, be upright. You don't get it. Make sure you're innocent. Make sure you're innocent of whatever it is you're bringing to the courts. I am saying these things for people who are pure innocent and they know that they need God to fight for them. You need God to fight for you. You cannot go to God. If you did this prayer, you went to God, you prayed to him, you asked him to vindicate you and you're innocent and your husband still chased you away. <laughs> God is not a liar. God cannot be mocked. I am not telling you to go to one native doctor and do it. I am not directing you to one um, babalawo to do it. I am telling you, go to the altar of God. Go there and tell him to be the judge of this. Go there and tell him to be the judge of this. Anytime, anytime you want to make the prayer, go ahead. Anytime you want to make the prayer, it doesn't have a time frame. Anytime you want to make the prayer, go ahead and make the prayer. What if you are the one that cannot pay while others are owing you? I don't get it. What if you are? What if you are and cannot pay while others are owing you? You're owing someone and someone is owing you. Is that what you mean? Can I do it on behalf of my husband? Her ex was didn't pay. Yes, you can. Yes. You can do it on behalf of your husband. You can do it on behalf of your husband. When I made that prayer, I, it wasn't me that was having issue with that woman. It was my mom. But I made that prayer on behalf of my mom. You can do it on behalf of your children. You can do it on behalf of your parents, your husband, anyone that needs justice. But if they can do it themselves, good. But if they are not um, 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 opportune to do it themselves, you can do it.
what if what if a father is the one bewitching his children if the father is the one bewitch, bewitching his children tell god to fight they are children are they, is it not true they are your children you baited them you gave birth to them you gave birth to those children they belong to you and their father is doing witchcraft go ahead And, your fa and, and their father is bewitching his children. And these children are yours. Go ahead and report the father. Go ahead. Report the father to God. Let just so that he can stop it. What this prayer will do is this. They will confess to you and it will be destroyed. You're simply telling God to fight for you. Fight for your children. Vindicate your children. Draw your children out from this depth. Draw your children out of this pit. God would do it. He has a way of breaking barriers. He has a way of breaking yokes. He has a way of breaking limits. He will break them and he will deliver you entirely in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, we have a new member. Grace Uchechuku. You are most welcome. I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. Grace Uchechuku. God bless you. And you are most welcome. Which is more good to use, smallest banknote or coin? I would advise you use small notes. I would advise you use notes. And please, while using these notes, do not spend it. Don't spend it. Or oh, when you are done with the first day of the prayer, keep it in your paper, in your book. Keep it somewhere safe. The second prayer, keep it somewhere safe. The third prayer. Keep it somewhere safe. Don't use that. You know you're going to be using one note for the three days. Don't spend it. Then on the third day, you drop it on the altar and you go home. You drop it on the altar and you what? You go home. God bless you all. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you in the name of Jesus. As you do this prayer, may God in his infinite mercy fight for you. For he is a just God. For he is a God that fights for his people. You're skipping my questions. What is your question? Can I do the prayer to apply for a position in my office? Have you been denied of it? If it is your right, you can also pray, make this prayer when seeking for um, promotion. You know you're due. In an office, when you've stayed so long in an office, you're due for a promotion. They are promoting people, but they're not promoting you. You're wondering what is going on. They will promote the first day. You're not being promoted. You're qualified. You have all the qualification. Tell God to fight for you. Simply tell him to fight for you. You have all the qualification it takes. All the qualification. Stella, God bless you. So you have all the qualification you need, all the qualification, and you're not being promoted. Every year, they'll promote somebody. It is not you. Every year, they'll promote you. And you know something is wrong. Go ahead and tell God. As we make this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we ask for understanding. We ask for understanding. We ask for understanding in the name of Jesus. May we do this prayer effectively. And as we go ahead to engage God, as we go ahead to call upon him to fight for us, as we go ahead to summon the counsel of Yahweh, let all our prayers be answered in the name of Jesus. Let God arise and fight our enemies. Let God arise and contend with those that contend with us. Let God arise and contend and destroy those that are up against us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, deliver us, O Lord. Lord, Deliver us, O Lord, as you fight the spiritual battles for us. Let us come out successfully in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We commit these battles into your hands. For the battle is yours. Lord, give us victory in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. If you're not sure of your enemies, go ahead and tell God, this is what is wrong with me. I am not sure who is doing this to me. If you're not sure of your enemies, you're not sure. You don't want to call wrong names. You're not sure. But you know this is what is happening to you. And you're, and what you know is that an enemy has done this. But you're not sure. You can't place a hand. You can't place a hand on who exactly has done this. What you're going to do is go and summon um. Just tell God, 
an enemy has done this. You see in the secret and you see in the physical. He's the God that sees in the spirit. He's the God that sees in the physical. Tell him to fight for you. He knows the person. You don't know the person. And you're just being careful so that you don't call wrong names. You're being careful. So tell him to fight for you. Tell him to fight these battles. Tell him to destroy them. He knows them. He can, he can point out this is the person that is hurting you. Let God go ahead and disgrace them and give you victory. Expose them, disgrace them, and remove them completely from your life. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Who is celebrating today? Nonso, are you celebrating? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Who is celebrating? Oh, if you pass celebrating, be sending my cake. Oh, don't eat cake alone. If you're celebrating your birthday, please send cake to me. God bless you. Don't mind me. Who is celebrating? Nonso. I saw happy birthday, Nonso. Happy birthday to you, Nonso. God bless your new year, your new age, your new experience, your new beginning. God bless you, sanctify you, and grant you all your desires in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you. I've come to the end of today's prayer. And please, please do this effectively, but make sure you're innocent. God bless you. Give the video a thumbs up. God bless you as you give the video a thumbs up. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Give the video a thumbs up. Please do not forget to give the video a thumbs up. Do not forget to give the video a thumbs up. Give the video a thumbs up. Today is Nonso's birthday. I keep seeing it. Who is the Nonso? Happy birthday, Nonso. Guys, please wish Nonso happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, Nonso. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. We have a testimony. Testimony, Amanda with salt, bath, and midnight prayer. My YouTube channel is restored again. I stopped it for no reason. Oh, Natasha. Welcome to YouTube again. You are welcome, and I decree that this YouTube will be successful. You are a successful YouTuber in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Amanda, must I carry the money at the altar three days? Yes. You must go with the money three days. Three days. The first day you go with the money. The second day you go with the money. The third day you go with the money. But after the third day prayer, you can go ahead and drop it on the altar my second testimony amanda with salt okay i just read that one it has been restored amen and amen happy birthday to you all happy birthday to you no so is today your birthday mm. today is not birthday no so you didn't tell us so that we can dance we can dance for you happy birthday to you uh, she forgot <laughs> she forgot today is her birthday no so you forgot actually in my place of work they thought today is my birthday i was surprised them today they actually thought today is my birthday in my place of work <laughs> hey they were calling me yesterday i was saying hey today tomorrow is your birthday that is today so they thought today is my birthday chai i'll shock them today when i get to work Happy birthday to you, Nonso. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that the good Lord will bless you. You said this new age, it is an age of open door. Amen. It is an age of success. Amen. It is an age of breakthrough. Amen. It is an age of good favors, blessings upon blessings. In this new age, you will not know sorrow. In the name of Jesus, you will not know tears. In the name of Jesus, you will not know pain. In the name of Jesus, you will not know tribulation. In the name of Jesus, the favor of the Lord will be seen in your life. And grace of God will speak for you continuously. In the name of Jesus, amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Happy birthday to you, Mama. Happy birthday. I love you. Happy birthday. Okay, guys, I need to go. God bless you. What if it is your own wrongdoing? If it is your own wrongdoing, ask God for mercy. 
if it is your own wrongdoing, hmm? this is what you're going to do. Still take the money. Go to the altar. Ask him to forgive you. Yes. Do you know, let me teach you all something, right? There are times, there are times you, you offend God or you do something and you realize that this is wrong. What you simply do is ask God to forgive you. When you go there, tell him to forgive you and tell him to correct a mistake. There is no solution. There is no way you won't get a solution. There is solution to everything. Let me give you an instance. Let me assume you did something bad. It is very bad. And it is taking a, it's going to take away your reputation. It is a mistake you made. And you're sorry. As an, you're deeply sorry. God sees you. He knows your heart. And he knows how sorry you are. Hmm? What you're going to do is this. When you get to the altar, ask him to forgive you. Beg him. Plead with him. Ask him for mercy. When you ask him to forgive you, hmm? what you're going to do is this. Tell him you will not go back to those things. Tell him to make a way for you. That he should remedy this situation. He should make a way. He should just remedy it. That you want to come out of this trouble. That you want to come out of this thing you found yourself in. He should make a way. He should turn it around. He should turn. He can turn situations around to favor you. No matter how bad. When he sees your heart and know that you have truly repented. He knows the heart of man. You cannot deceive him. He knows how you feel. He, you cannot deceive him. You cannot say one thing. You can say it to a human being and they won't know your heart, but God sees your heart. So when you come to him and sincerely you apologize, he knows how a sincere heart is and he will forgive you. What he will do is this. He will change the story for you. He will make it easy for you. If you're going to get a very huge sentence, he might actually make it to be light and you will be forgiven. He's God and he knows how to fix everything. So I pray for you today. If you've done something wrong and you're sincerely sorry, I pray in the name of Jesus as you engage in mercy prayer that God will show you mercy, forgive you and have mercy and, and save you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Guys, give the video a thumbs up, please. Give the video a thumbs up. God bless you as you give the video a thumbs up. I've come to the end of this video. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. The verse to read is Psalm 140. 140. 140. Teresa, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Receive the healing power of God. Receive the healing power of God. Receive the healing power of God. You are healed. You are healed. You are healed. In the name of Jesus. If you are not a Catholic, go to any church. But make sure that they serve a living God. Make sure that they serve a living God in that church. God bless you all. If you want a visa, you can do the same thing. Go to the council of Yahweh. Request that God grants you a visa. And he will do it for you in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. I love you all. I'll see you all in the evening. God bless you. Please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. I love you. I love you. I love you. Bye-bye.